Yo, what is going on guys? In this video, we'll be going over how to create this 3D camera movement transition. We're essentially just going to be zooming out the camera and then zooming it back in so that we create this really seamless transition between two different clips. So here in After Effects, I have these three clips that I'll be using in order to create this 3D camera movement. These are my composition settings, 1600 by 1080, and it's at 23.976 frames per second. To get started, we're going to be wanting to focus on this middle layer right here because we're going to be using this layer in order to freeze frame it and creating this 3D camera movement transition with. So in my case, I already chose a frame that I wanted to freeze frame. I like the way this frame looks, so I added a marker to it. And then what I'm going to do is just right click that layer, go to time, and then freeze frame that layer. Now, as you guys can see, this frame is a still image. I'm going to now just delete this marker because I'm not going to need it anymore. And I'm just going to extend it all the way so that it fills the entire composition and because we're going to be using this layer in order to create that 3d camera movement what i'm going to do now is just use the pen tool and mask out my subject after masking out your subject i'm going to then click that layer and click m twice in order to reveal the mask and i'll be adjusting the mask feather as well as the mask expansion for the mask feather i'll increase that to two and then i'll decrease the mask expansion to negative two so now we have smoother edges for our subject with this layer what i'm going to do is duplicate it so click ctrl d so that we have a freeze framed layer on the left and then a freeze framed layer on the right i'm also just going to rename all these layers just to make it easier you definitely want to rename your layers just so that everything is a lot more organized. So in our case, for this freeze frame layer that's going to be going to the right, what I'm going to do is just add 500 to the X position. 800 plus 500 is 1300. And then for the one on the left, I'm going to subtract 500 because I want to create an even amount of space between these two layers as well as the background layer, which is the actual video that's playing. So 800 minus 500 is 300. I'm going to then grab this layer that's on the right, open up the rotation, rotate that in a way Way so that it's flipped upside down. So I have that at negative 180. Now we're going to move on to creating the 3D camera movement. First begin by turning all of these layers into 3D layers. And I'm also just going to turn on the motion blur for all of these layers. I'm going to then create a new camera. So go to camera or go to new and then click camera. These are going to be my camera settings click OK. Before creating this animation, I'm going to first start out by just adjusting the spacing of these layers. So what I'm going to do is go over here and go to click two views so that now we have two views of our composition. And in order to get this custom view, you just want to go here and then click custom view one. Now, as you guys can see, when we look at all of our layers, they're all within the same Z position. For this first layer, what I'm going to do is just move it back all the way just so that we have depth between these three layers. I'll be having my like that and then i'm going to grab the scale and increase it so that it fills in the entire composition so just like that we already created some depth between these layers i'm also just going to open up the position of these two freeze frame layers and for these two freeze frame layers i'm also just going to add some depth by moving it closer to the camera so if you just grab both of these layers and grab that blue arrow, which is the Z position. I'll increase it like that. We have a lot of spacing between these three layers. And the reason why we're doing that is because you want to have a foreground, a middle ground, and then a background. So in our case, we're going to have this background layer, which is the actual video playing. And then the middle ground is going to be the text layers that we're eventually going to be creating. And then these two freeze frame layers are going to be the foreground. That's essentially how you would want to approach it when it comes to creating these 3D camera movements. So what I'm going to do now is just create a new null layer. Layer. And the reason why I'm doing that is because when it comes to 3D camera movements, I personally think that it's easier to create 3D camera movements by adding null layers and then just attaching that camera into the null layer. For this null layer, turn that into a 3D layer. And I'm going to grab this camera layer, grab the parent pick whip tool, and then just attach it to that null object. So now, as you guys can see, if I open up the position, this null object is going to be controlling our camera. Now what I'm going to do is just go back to just one view. I'm going to go to the one second mark, go to this null object, create a keyframe for that null object, and then just go forward 20 frames, hold the shift button and click page down twice. Actually, we're going to go back to the two views so that I can actually see my layers. So what we're going to do with this null object is just grab the Z position and just drag it back to the point where where it creates this zoom out transition. I'll keyframe mine like that, grab both of these keyframes, easy ease them, go into the graph editor, and then we're going to have the influence at 100%. 
so that it animates fast in the beginning and then it slows down towards the end. Now, if I play this, this is what we have for the animation. And that doesn't look good right now, but we're going to fix that and it's going to look a lot better later. Because we're creating that zoom out camera movement, as you guys can see, we have these edges at the bottom of both of these layers that we can see. In order to fix that, create a new null object, turn this null object into a 3D layer, grab both of these freeze framed layers, grab the parent pick whip tool and connect it to that null object, open up the position, grab your time indicator and just make sure that you're past this keyframe, which is the keyframe of the position of the null object. And what we're going to do is just decrease the Z position, or you can just grab this blue arrow and just drag it forward so that we don't see the bottom edges of these freeze frame layers. So I'll have my Z position like that. And now if we play this, we can't see the bottom edges of both of those freeze frame layers. Now we're going to move on to creating that animation where we have both of these freeze frame layers rotating. So with the same null object, we're going to open up the rotation, go to the one second mark, keyframe the Z rotation, go forward 20 frames, keyframe the Z rotation to 180, easy ease both of those keyframes, go into the graph editor, and then we're going to create a similar graph where we have the influence at 100%. Now when I play this, we have that rotation effect where both of those layers rotate in. I feel like that goes a little too fast. Go forward two frames, grab this keyframe, play it again. Feels a little too fast too, so I'm just going to go forward another two frames. When it comes to creating these animations, it just takes a lot of trial and error. Now when I play this, feels a lot smoother. We're going to now move on to creating the text animation. So right when the camera zooms out, we're going to have the title of our artist and then the title of the song. Now I'm going to go back to the one view and then we're going to create a new text layer. First, start out by typing out our artist name, our artist, which is Summers. For this text layer, I wanna make sure that I have the anchor point right at the center. Click that layer. You wanna hold the control button on your keyboard and then double click this anchor point tool. Now, as you guys can see, we have that anchor point right at the center. For this font, I'm using Engraver's MT font, but you can use whatever font that you want. We're going to turn this layer into a 3D layer and also turn on the motion blur. And now that it's a 3D layer, the layer gets a lot smaller. So I'm just going to open up the scale and increase that so that it's a lot bigger. I'll have that at 200%. We're going to then duplicate that layer, click Control D so that we can create the title of our song. Grab that layer and drag it down so that it's right underneath the name of our artist. Change it to Marble floors, which is the name of the song. Click that layer and open up the scale. And when it comes to the layout of these two text layers, I want to make sure that the width of both of these text layers align with each other. I'm going to have mine like that. For this text layer, you also want to make sure that the anchor point is right at the center. Make sure that the position is aligned for both of these text layers. So now if we open up the two views, we can see that our text layers are the layers that are the middle ground. The layer in the background is our video, and then the foreground is the freeze frame layers. I'm also just going to make sure that the summer's layer is right at the center, and it's a lot closer with the title of our song. I'm going to then add a Gaussian blur to this text layer. Increase the blurriness to four, add a glow to this. You can add whatever glow that you want. I'll just be adding the uni glow. Decrease the intensity to 0.5, grab both of these effects, click Control C and then copy and paste it to the other layer, which is the title. Go back into just one view, grab both of these two text layers and just drag it underneath both of our freeze framed layers because I'm going to create an animation in a way where once the camera zooms out, I'm going to have both of these text layers slide in. So we're going to create that animation where we have the top text sliding from the left and then the bottom text sliding from the right. And for that text animation, I want it to slide out right before the camera zooms out completely. So I have mine around here. Grab both of these two text layers and just cut it to that point. We're going to go forward 10 frames, keyframe the position of both of those text layers, go towards the beginning. And for this summer's layer, I'm going to keyframe this in a way where it slides from the left. So I have it like that. And then for the marble floors text layer, I'll keyframe it in a way where it slides in from the right. I'll keyframe it like that. Grab all four of these layers, easy ease them. Go into the graph editor of these position keyframes, create the same graph, have the influence at 100% and then create the same graph for our other layer. Now when I play this, this is what we have for the animation. So I feel like that text animation animates in a little too fast. Go forward four frames, grab these two keyframes here at the end and just drag it forward four frames. Now when I play this, 
it feels smoother. So as you can see, it animates in really fast in the beginning and it just slows down towards the end. Going back to the beginning of the timeline, because we're creating a camera zoom out transition, we want to create that effect where we have this layer sort of zooming out too. Because as you guys can see, when the camera zooms out, this layer just cuts out. So for this layer, we're going to keyframe the scale. And I'm also going to open up the keyframe for the null object, which is for the camera. And go to that point where the zoom out transition starts. Keyframe the scale at 175%. Go forward 10 frames. Keyframe the scale at 0%. Easy ease both of those keyframes frames go into the graph editor create the same graph now when i play this we have that really seamless zoom out transition. And the reason why this scale keyframe isn't in the layer is because I want there to be more of a seamless animation rather than having the scale completely stop right when the layer cuts. We're going to now move on to the next part of the animation where we have our camera zooming in as well as rotating. We're going to create a new null object. Make sure to turn this null object into a 3D layer, change the color of that. Grab the parent pick whip tool from the null object from before and make sure it's attached to that new null object. We're going to keyframe the position of this null object. Go to where the zoom out transition completely stops. So we're going to go right here, keyframe the position. And because I want to create a really smooth zoom in transition, I'm going to go forward 30 frames, open up two views. For this null object, I'm going to keyframe the Z position so that it zooms in all the way. Faster way to do it is just grab that blue arrow. I want to really exaggerate the zoom in transition. So I'll keyframe the position like that. And as you guys can see, when we play this through, the camera zooms right into our video layer. What I'm going to do is open up the scale as well as the position for this final layer. And I'm just going to push back the Z position in a way that we can see our layer. I'll have the position like that and then go back to this null object. Easy ease these keyframes. We're going to go into the graph editor of these position keyframes. For this graph editor, I'm going to have it where we have the influence on the left at 100%. So it starts off really slow and then it animates out really fast. And because we are zooming in, I'm also going to keyframe the scale of our final layer. Keyframe the scale at 0% at the start. Go forward 10 frames. Keyframe the scale to 100%. Easy ease both of those keyframes. Go into the graph editor. For this graph, we're going to have the right side have an influence at 100%. Now when we play this, we have a really smooth zoom out transition and then a zoom in transition. We're going to now create that rotation animation where right when it zooms in, we're going to have both of these freeze frame layers rotating. Create a new null object. Turn that null object into a 3D layer. Grab the null object from before. Make sure to attach the parent pick whip tool to that new null object. Keyframe the Z rotation of this null object right when camera is about to zoom in. And then go forward 30 frames. Keyframe the Z rotation at 180 degrees. Easy ease those keyframes. Go into the graph editor. We're going to have the influence at 100% for the left keyframe. Now when we play this, this is what we have for our final animation. The goal was to really just focus on how to create a really seamless 3D camera movement, but that is all I have for this video. I hope you guys like this one. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.